Uh, good morning from uh, Adelaide, Australia, and uh, yeah, uh, for, uh, wherever you are, uh, and thank you for joining the webinar for this seminar. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, just, uh, nursing history in Japan. Um, I think this is a quite broad, and uh, if I start talking, it won't fit within uh, you know 20, 25 minutes or so for this webinar. So I'm going to focus on, on the uh, particular um, um, uh, topics for this uh, seminar. So overview for this uh, talk is uh, I'm going to talk about a uh, little bit touch on uh, what health system, healthcare system look like in Japan and then who are the current work workforce to respond to uh, disaster situation in Japan. So it's, this is a bit more t I'm talking about the current uh, situation in Japan. And because, uh, um, because I'm focusing on the historical perspective, so I'm picking up some uh, um, moment that, uh, um, that the uh, Japanese uh, nursing um, disaster you know that area that the nurses are realizing uh, the importance of the um, disaster uh, uh, nursing uh, perspective so I'm picking up the two um, moments and reflecting on that past experience um, I'd like to focus on the what was the learning from the past and is it you know that the experience of the past is a more um, um, you know, ref, uh, reflecting, improving, achieving the current situation. So, I guess that uh, I'm ending on the uh, posing some questions and uh, reflection on, you know, where we are up to now, and then from here to where we could go. Okay. So I, of course, everyone. Uh, be aware of the disasters in Japan is uh, historically and geologically uh, natural disasters uh, prone area. So when I, uh, thinking about last 20 years, uh, it's quite frequent natural and man-made disasters um, happened and we are exposed to uh, more uh, severe, you know, that, that um, damage and impact of disasters. So uh, we uh, um, getting know that, you know, the disaster happens in our current situation. Um, I'd like to a little bit uh, briefly touch on the what health uh, care system in Japan look like. So in Japan, the uh, health care, um, health cup, uh, is a uh, universal health coverage so that everyone can have access to uh, any uh, sort of uh, um, health from primary health to uh, you know that uh, um, uh, treatment at the different level of uh, uh, health uh, care system and I think it's very unique how um, uh, health facilities um, uh, 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 established in Japan. So, um, if you see the, this table, there's a very different level of uh, um, uh, hospital administration. So, they are depending on the ownership of the hospital. So, they are national uh, funded hospitals and when, uh, there's a public, when we say public, because different level of uh, government administration from uh, uh, municipal level to the prefectural and there also national or like federal uh, level of the government hospital. So there are so many different um, ownership of the um, uh, hospitals. And also others which is a more private owned, uh, including really uh, you know, individual private to uh, more uh, like a kind of franchised um, in organizational um, or could be a charity um, religious found uh, you know that founded uh, hospital as well 
and there are so many clinics which is I think it's make it very unique to uh, nursing history uh, in Japan as well where the clinic uh, is owned by the one usually one doctor and uh, doctor can be it uh, you know independent after that a certain training and having a specialty area so um, when I came to Australia I realized so uh, there are so many special um, you know specialized clinic in Japan so you see an uh, EMT in the community specialists everywhere or you know the pediatric clinics and uh, women's and uh, women's health clinics so I think this is a very different um, unique I think to um, um, Japanese healthcare system and uh, if you are um, talking about nursing history um, and the clinic is a very unique relationship because um, you know that the nursing history in Japan is more started um, more family oriented approach to way uh, compared to I guess uh, you know that where the uh, Christianity is there looking after the um, you know the sick people or you know that the, uh, who need the care is more based on uh, comes from the originated from a religious um, approach but in Japan I think it's more about uh, family look after the uh, sick person so when they um, there is a person at the uh, clinic uh, to be admitted or stay there um, family like family member is have to be there to look after the you know the the, the person rather than that uh, um, who are the you know care for the this uh, sick uh, people so um, a lot of uh, I think historically there are many um, uh, kind of uh, care uh, uh, we call um, uh, not deployment care uh, uh, um, uh, agency that uh, so that you, if you uh, ask the agency to introduce the person who look after the sick people they send you so I guess most of the times women who are a bit mature and then capable to look after um, the sick people so uh, they are, I believe they are still agency to send uh, um, the carer to the hospital when the family member cannot be there or, or family member can afford to hire those uh, people so this is a little bit um, out of track but uh, uh, unique um, perspective of the clinic and then also the history of nursing and nurses how they started so of course there are many um, venues exist in Japan and so nurse uh, works everywhere so from community to acute settings um, according to where the you know care needs are and these days um, trend for the health care system is uh, uh, of course you know, that the um, shortage of financial budget and constraints so short stay at hospital is uh, progressing and uh, um, you know uh, people who are at the hospital are encouraged to uh, discharge community and uh, you know that uh, community nursing or care is uh, recommended and there also primary health care approach is um, developing as well so we looking at the current actors so uh, in disaster situations so I'm not really uh, uh, into the de details so if you uh, know about more a Japanese workforce system or if you're familiar maybe you can um, bring up to the, at the end of this session and uh, um, I'm going to talk about between the global level to uh, uh, local level and uh, up from the nursing workforce what, what is the uh, uh, current situation in Japan so global levels so oh, this uh, there's a uh, um, uh, 
agency called the JICA, Japan International Corporation Agency, uh, which is a uh, uh, third party uh, of the government uh, body, so which, that is uh, uh, supported, financially supported from the Japanese government, which um, the organization uh, does a lot of international de development as well as uh, international uh, medical relief, um, that kind of a work. So they have a um, big body called JICA and uh, they started uh, relief um, internationally Cambodia refugees in 1987, so that is a, a record in there. And also, um, uh, this is not only a big uh, governmental body, but also there is a um, in Red Cross, uh, Japan, Japan Red Cross as well, so they have a, I guess, uh, you know, if you know, familiar with the structure of Red Cross, they have uh, their own medical uh, dispatch team uh, who are already uh, always ready to go. So that is another um, global level of uh, disaster medical response team. And uh, there are many uh, different uh, medical response team as well. So from a local level to gro uh, global level, so if you look up the local level, uh, there's uh, DMAT, which is um, uh, typically established by a municipal area and there's a um, MOU between the, these governments uh, administration level and then also that uh, uh, medical institutes with, which uh, I explained the, in the healthcare system from uh, you know the public uh, hospital to a national hospital, private hospital, so they have a unique um, MOU between the um, those hospital and the uh, local government administration. So um, I guess uh, so many varieties depending on the ownership of the uh, MOU and also DMAT. And uh, because of the 1995 uh, disaster um, earthquake, uh, I think that's was a quite significant event to trigger to uh, make uh, health professional professionals realize the importance of uh, uh, establishment of these uh, DMAT. You know, whenever uh, the people need their um, you know medical attendance attentions, uh, we should be ready. So that kind of uh, um, awareness was a. Uh, um, you know, that uh, raised um, in the 1995 uh, event. For nursing perspective, um, there is a disaster volunteer registry now, so which is uh, um, organized by the uh, Japan Nursing Association, so which uh, also has a big network uh, you know, that uh, uh, depending on the regional, so there's uh, 47 uh, prefectures in Japan, so each prefecture has their own uh, branch uh, which uh, in a, uh, net network or communicate with the national level of um, uh, nursing association. So each uh, prefecture um, uh, coordinate the, uh, this volunteer registry and uh, when uh, disaster happened, uh, that between the prefectures um, administration, they um, communicate each other and uh, how you know the deployment of those uh, branch units is uh, uh, negotiated, and and then uh, number of uh, you know rotation and uh, how many nurses need so that kind of coordination. Uh, will be made by the uh, this organization. So this is also uh, established after the 1995 uh, disaster, and um, this is quite. Uh, I guess it's uh, really established now. So in the uh, 2011 uh, disaster, um, I forgot the exact number of the um, 
uh, nurses who are deployed, but it's uh, really uh, working well um, at this moment from the, um, you know, during the recovery uh, phase of uh, disaster. And of course, there are many uh, NGOs, NPOs uh, for disaster medical relief uh, in Japan as well. So um, we are going back to the uh, little bit touch on the fast movement of disaster nursing education. Um, I was looking up the uh, some information about how uh, how did the uh, nursing uh, disaster nurse uh, nursing had you know, started in in Japan nursing history, and uh, as far as I I could go back, I think it's really um, there's a relationship when the nursing education system had established um, in the late 19th century. It, uh, uh, when you think about that, the late 19th century, the big shift um, in Japan to introduce Western um, culture into uh, Japan, uh, because up to then, until then, that they um, they have uh, you know the closed uh, relationship, so uh, Japanese government doesn't want to uh, communicate over you know that the other side of the country, so uh, they are so behind and uh, the, the Meiji government decided uh, to catch up with the, uh, you know, that the um, other countries. So 1868, I think, they decided to do a restoration. So they're going to change whole society system to change it over to a westernized system. So that the, one of the introduced system was also nursing education. So um, quite a few number of nurses went overseas, like UK and then also US, uh, to see what's happening there. So uh, uh, those nurses um, and also doctors went overseas to learn what's happening outside of the Japan. And they got around the system and came back to Japan to introduce and implement a new uh, nursing education system. So that is uh, uh, around the late uh, 19th century when the uh, quite big earthquake happened. So it's similar to um, you know that, that uh, 2011 um, uh, disaster. So magnitude eight. Point zero and the northeast of uh, Tokyo, and uh, quite a number of people had died and injured. And back then, um, it, uh, especially that cross uh, nursing education has been established. So um, there are five, um, I guess, more privileged, like fast established schools, nursing school in Japan. So one of them was a Red Cross. So they are the um, you know, nurses who are trained more officially and they are deployed uh, from Tokyo to the um, affected area as well. And there's another um, uh, nursing schools uh, in on talk, uh, Osaka and Kyoto. So some nurses are uh, deployed from there to uh, um, near the Tokyo, northeast of Tokyo, where the um, uh, earthquake affected the area as well. And uh, because of this incident, uh, event, so Red Cross started to train nurses to relieve people in disaster situations. So they reviewed the, um, some training regulation to include them um, to prepare a disaster situation. I think this is a quite uh, interesting uh, perspective because uh, you know, that before the um, disaster happened, that uh, uh, nursing nurses relief is uh, meant to be the more uh, battlefield relief. So there is another perspective on the disaster relief was uh, added. So here is some images of uh, the 1891 disaster. So on on your right hand side, this is. Um, uh, deployment from an imperial hospital, so it's uh, um, like you know the temporary shelter hospital, and then people getting. So I'm quite not sure because there's no captions who is who, but I imagine uh, people who are wearing a white uh, 
how kind of uh, things is is looking after people maybe could be a nurse uh, I'm not sure that uh, because there's uh, no explanation but this is uh, some uh, picture uh, showing us about the uh, what look like back then so obviously left side it, the house structure is very different and then all um, yes yeah, so uh, magnitude 8.0 so it's all the um, uh, houses are destroyed And then following five years, there's another um, earthquake, tsunami, like, uh, you know, last 20 years, uh, like contemporary, like, you know, last, um, since 1995 to now, it's similar situation happened back then. So there's another natural disaster in Miyagi and Amomori, and there's more uh, this uh, uh, happened. And and uh, because of the training and uh, implementation of the you know disaster relief um, uh, activities for nurses, so there is more expansion of the deployment from the Red Cross, uh, both um, affected area as well as uh, you know the, the Tokyo area too. And another uh, uh, 20 years or so, there is another uh, worst disaster um, happened, uh, earthquake, which caused more than 100,000 people um, dead. So I'm a little bit skipping, up, uh, speeding up to the contemporary phase, but um, after the, uh, because of the, you know, the, the 19th, 20th centuries, we are uh, going to the world war, so, and there is not m many disasters, I guess war itself was a disaster, and uh, a lot of nurses are more, uh, you know, role was shifted from the uh, disaster deployment to the uh, more relief to the soldiers who were affected in the uh, battlefield. So there is a between uh, two, uh, peaks of time, there's uh, wars, uh, and after the war, if we're looking up uh, the, what happened to uh, the event, natural uh, disaster event since then, so I pick up some uh, tables who had uh, more than 1,000 deaths, and um, compared to the, uh, you know, previous, like uh, late 19th century disaster, the um, death and missing toll is, uh, um, you know, not so um, increasing, and then rather a uh, little bit decrease and a bit stabilize until um, you know 1995. Yes, there's a uh, 1959 uh, the big typhoon, but after that um, there's another. Uh, with our memories, we remember the big. Um, a disaster is a Hanshian was earthquake, which happened in the 1995. So this uh, event was really um, uh, awakening contemporary disaster nursing, which also um, you know similar uh, in terms of similar uh, event in terms of to realize us to or you know disaster nursing is very important to thinking about uh, from the not only the uh, disaster period, but also non-disaster period. And uh, because of this uh, earthquake, um, and media was uh, quite developed, and the people immediately know what's happening to the uh, you know, affected area. And I remember that on the in the morning, I was sitting on the TV and looking at the where the, my family uh, places, uh, you know, that the smoking come up and the people are, are running around. And so it's really shocking um, uh, uh, image. So I think that's all uh, people uh, in Japan realize, you know, that disaster really happens in our lives. It's not about, you know, somewhere else. So it's realize themselves to more, you know, that uh, um, in their life thing. So um, nurses and then uh, realized uh, from this experience um, is I, I pick up some uh, learning experience which uh, thinking point 
is uh, one is uh, because of uh, uh, affected area is quite uh, urban central area and a lot of people um, uh, lost their homes and they have to stay evacuation center for quite a uh, number of days and stay in the evacuation centers and and then it was a January uh, middle January which is a uh, um, coldest season in Japan, so a lot of uh, infection disease and uh, um, when you're thinking about the Japanese population, all the people, a lot of older people are affected and uh, there was a quite uh, high need of nursing care at evacuation centers. And also, um, it is not only about evacuation center, but also after the evacuation center, the uh, people move into the temporary housing and they stayed three, four years um, until they find a, a permanent housing. So during the peri this period was quite um, important be uh, because um, uh, people who were affected is living in the quite uh, close net knitted um, community and then once their community was separated and uh, moved into the different uh, temporary housing so that the, this uh, uh, small community was broken up once and that they have to establish again so um, quite a number of people uh, who are isolated, you know, that isolation and also alcoholism and also that uh, suicide and also that the mental illness, mental health um, perspective was quite, um, uh, you know, concerned and they also highlighted for this uh, importance of uh, support care in the community setting. And also, um, so many people, um, you know, uh, participate to support uh, as a volunteer in terms of any level of work, work uh, from health professional to the uh, community recovery. So, you know, that everyone realized the uh, importance of volunteer and then partially how can be you know, skilled or knowledgeable about what they can do about uh, after the uh, help in the recovery phase. And uh, lastly, I think it's a um, uh, really interesting uh, call, um, you know, that um, sharing point with the uh, uh, late 19th century trend is uh, recognition of disaster nursing discipline. Because of this experience, as well as um, around the 1990s um, in Japanese nursing system, they had uh, quite um, um, introduction of the uh, bachelor or baccalaureate level of nursing in Japan. So uh, the number of the nursing school who are recognized at the university was uh, quite increasing, booming. So. Um, Everyone believes nursing, nurses, you know, nurses and nursing educator, educator believe that um, you know having a four years course at, as a tertiary level is uh, you know that, uh, we, um, recognized as a part of the discipline. So, with that recognition and uh, you know disaster event is also um, matches their need to um, make a nursing disaster nursing uh, as a part of a discipline. So, um, I think this is a really um, pushed by the Dr. Hiroko Minami and. Uh, it's really um, at this moment it's, uh, established as a part of the society uh, of the Japanese disaster nursing as well. So um, I'd like to just a little bit uh, wrapping up what we, uh, I talked about from the two uh, peak events in the past. So there are various natural disasters experienced uh, you know, in the last 20 years and uh, nursing education uh, is uh, you know, recognized, uh, I mean that disaster nursing education is, has been recognized and uh, disaster nursing topic is now compulsory 
to embed it into the uh, nursing curriculum in Japan since 2009. So there is a level of uh, differences on the implementation. Of course, the we are the uh, you know that the nursing schools are. Uh, are situated in the more disaster prone area within Japan, they are more tend to do uh, more um, training or involvement of the uh, uh, another workshops. And also the, there's a disaster nursing global leadership program was implemented and which is a five years course from the master to PhD course. And the Japan Nursing Association, they have a volunteer nurse uh, registration, registration system there. And uh, also the, um, from here is, a, um, the, I guess, question, evidence-based approach to disaster nursing is, uh, is this progressing? I think I believe so. Um, and then there's a much need to be done to, um, because of the nature of the uh, disaster uh, research, but uh, um, there are much things can be done. And then also that, uh, you know, adjusting the nursing role over times, including during the <clears throat> disaster phases. I think this is a very true because nursing roles changes over time depending on the, you know, the needs from the society and also because of the, the um, um, significant disaster event and uh, nurses who are more, um, you know, can be uh, de deployable, can, you know, uh, work or help people straight away, that kind of uh, readiness for the nurses are more, um, you know, uh, more um, needed from the society and then we are getting ready for it um, by in involving the people, uh, community uh, from the non-disaster period as well. And I think that's important to, um, you know, that uh, accumulating knowledge and experience uh, based on the past ex experience um, to, uh, as a part of the, you know, disaster nursing discipline. So for the, um, to concluding this uh, uh, session, I'd like to uh, pick up the two points. So I pointed at two peaks of uh, emergence of the disaster experience, which the first one happened late 18th century, and then uh, second one in the last 20, uh, you know, two decades is really pushed for the, you know, the discipline or, you know, training uh, or education to de develop uh, and implement into the uh, nursing education. And at this moment, so knowledge transition between non-disaster period and the disaster period, how you know, nurses role can be done this well is a very, um, you know, core, core of, uh, I guess, uh, uh, business and also that uh, contribution to disaster uh, uh, risk or oh, the, the uh, disaster risk reduction in the nursing role is uh, important and then uh, I just wondering you know this is my question as well how we can um, you know think about the resilience concept between the non-disaster period and the disaster period in terms of uh, uh, in a nursing perspective. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, I'm not too rushing to go through, but it's too quite big, um, you know, the area of uh, um, study, but uh, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, yes, so this is it. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Kako. Uh, if anyone okay. has questions, you can use the uh, raise hand feature um, and we can unmute your microphone and you can uh, ask your question. Uh, I see we have a handful of people on the call, but we don't have any anyone. Uh, everyone's being shy, apparently. Well, oh, 
I do see one person who just raised their hand. Uh, uh, Rowena, um, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Uh, yes, thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you very much, uh, Naomi, for a very interesting presentation. I just wanted to ask, because I'm a, a doctor, um, what what is the relationship like between doctors and nurses in Japan? Do they find it easy to work together collaboratively as team members like we see here, or do they have a more formal relationship? Oh. Thank you, Lorena, for your question. Yes, um, I think it's really uh, depending on where you work. I think it's if you work in a clinic, which is a smaller, you know, that the size of a institution, so maybe there's a one nurse and um, sorry, a couple of nurses and one doctor. So they might do a you know scope of their practice is quite different. So they might do a you know uh, everything, what whatever doctor says. But I think it's a, generally uh, still nurses uh, uh, feel, you know, a little bit more uh, want to have more autonomy, I guess. And uh, yes, it's really difficult to say, you know, that uh, generalize. But um, I believe it's. A, quite different where you are working and then probably if you are working in the more uh, larger size like you know more beds uh, and more you know tertiary level of uh, hospitals probably they are more co cooperatively and then um, scope of practice is quite uh, certain so you know they are more uh, likely to work uh, together yeah so this is a lot I can say I guess Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And we have one question that was sent through the uh, chat feature. Uh, it's from Wendy McKenzie, who uh, apparently is having issues and, and is not able to ask the question, so I'm going to ask it for her. And she asks, um, what, uh, what information has – I'm, I'm going to rephrase it a little bit, but basically she's yep. asking – what information has been pat what what has Japan de delineated as far as knowledge that is passed on to new student nurses? Hmm. So de delineated. So is that uh, uh, can you say it again? So that's a knowledge of the well, I think, yeah. I think what he's trying to ask is kind of what is the core n information that is passed on. Uh, to student nurses. Oh, it's very broad in, in terms of, I guess, disaster nursing, isn't it? Um, I think it, you know, that uh, uh, because I believe that nursing education has a three perspective: the knowledge and the skills, and you know, professional attitude, ethics. So, based on that, I think you can implement. In, you know, you can think about if you disaster what. Attitude you would take ethically, how you can you know that participate the um, relief activity and how much knowledge you have to to be effective um, practitioner when you are you are there as a nursing student, and then also what sort of skill you know um, you know because they are still um, nursing students and depending on the level. So uh, I guess depending on the which uh, you know that the learning stage they are so, but I I believe three core um, attributes of nurses is uh, should be uh, handed you know that uh, educated for a nursing student I think. Yeah, I hope I'm answering the question. <laughs> please let, um, uh, let Wendy know if she has more question, please. Uh, I don't see any other questions, um, yep. and I, I'm certain Wendy can follow up with you if she uh, would like some more detail. Yep. The two of you are both on the nursing special interest section. So uh, without any other questions, I think we can conclude the webinar, and I'd really like to thank Dr. Kako for taking the time this morning to 
uh, do the presentation for Wadham, and uh, we are currently planning the remaining schedule for 2017, so as soon as we confirm the other presenters, we'll get those posted on the website. Yep, sounds great. Well, thanks much, everybody. Appreciate it, and we will uh, talk to you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.